All right. So this is a rundown behind the scenes. Um, this is kind of like part of the, the old studio. Um, obviously it's still, it's still there, right? I'm still using it, but what I've done is I'm converting this space into a mobile unit, right? So it allows me to not only have this thing shipped, but also if I really wanted to, I can put this in the back of a van, back of a car and set up a full blown studio wherever I want. So this bad boy is on wheels and I can kind of walk through some of the components, so obviously I know you're looking at the, the two ATM minis and you're like, why the hell does this dude have two ATM minis versus like one ATM extreme and all this? But so the reality is, is with Black Magic, they have one slight flaw. The ATM Mini Pro ISO, actually you can plug in a USB hard drive and do live recordings directly to it. The problem with that is if you want to use this directly to a computer at the same time, you can't because it has one USB out. So the solution for that, obviously, you can kind of use a switcher, but what better switcher than to use another ATM Mini Basic, right? So like now, literally, I can kind of swap between multiple different things. Right now, there's no other cameras on right now, but you can kind of see this is um, computer one, camera two, camera three, which is live right now, and then camera four, which is off. The beautiful part about that is that now I can add three extra cameras to the top, right? So my main four camera is the output from this ATM mini into this one. So it allows me to kind of have that main stream that comes down to this. Now, as you can see on this, if I was to hit the, you kind of see the splits on that. So the split up here is also up on that screen as well, as you can kind of see it. So the reason for that is obviously when I'm doing actual live or I'm doing actual recording and I'm set up in this, this frame or I'm set up on the street or wherever, I can have a producer on this box and I can kind of see what I want on that. So ideally this little mini screen is an upgrade situation to where this box is streaming whatever data is coming into it, into here, and this box is streaming all the, the, the core data into that screen right uh actually it's vice versa this one is actually streaming what's on here and this one is actually streaming the live feed into that but obviously they're all synced so you can kind of see it having the actual stream deck built into here so the stream deck is great for automation uh, allows me to if i just want to run a, uh, a stream or if i want to run a podcast if i want to run editing i just select the button that's pre-programmed it'll launch everything for me um this little pro deck so this is a secondary recorder now mind you I already have like the old school road, right? And the road has a built-in recorder as well too. So the reason why I have the secondary recorder on there is just redundancies, right? So I can then record live on here. And if I need a backup, just worst case scenario, I'm running it here. And the other thing too, is I also have this wireless channel set up. So if I'm running wireless lobs, then the wireless lobs can then record directly into here versus directly into the actual board switcher up top. So that way I don't have to really mess with the actual um, audio signals. Everything is preset between these two so they can record directly to them. And I just pop out the damn um, SD card ready to go. Um, I got some TTL cables down below. And that's just because, you know, obviously with video, if you're going to run long cables, you have to, you know, run those cables with not, not necessarily the standard HDMI, BNC connectors are your best friends when it comes to this. So that way you can run way longer than a hundred foot. Cause I think if I'm correct, HDMI cables are 50 feet or a hundred feet maximum. So this allows me to run a um, hundred plus foot. Again, once I'm outside set up and then I could bust this back through, through, let me show you some of these adapters that I got. So you see these ATM mini adapters. So I can kind of change that 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 signal back into HDMI and vice versa. So like this, this is also key as well too, if you're gonna do that setup. So on the top, what I did is I took this. This is something that I had like old school. So I ended up, you know, jerry rigging it. I like to get a rig things, right? And screwed it into the frame so I could actually put things like this on it. I could actually have a cell phone right here live. So if we have a producer on here or if you just want to have like a live setup, you can actually record the person or you can record what you're doing on the board. I could put another camera right here. I could put another camera right here. And the beautiful thing about it is that it has a self leveler in it. So you always know if you're level or not, it makes your shots easier. This is a power adapter for um, headphones. So if you have more than one person listening, let's say you have somebody else in the studio, somebody that's not on the microphone or somebody else's producer, you could bust their actual headsets through here and make the main bus out of here into here. And that way you can do up to four signals. Um, this is actually the main board. Actually, I could do four microphones on here right now. I got one mic put in. So that's why this is set up like that. Now the metal frame on the top, 
this is kind of golden because it's going to allow me to kind of build this frame out to where like once I enclose this for shipping, it's going to be like in a in like a, a metal slash wood box. And that's why I have some of the things protruding out on the sides a little bit to kind of attach things to it to make it secure for shipping. But ideally, this little ledge right here is going to be so sexy in the sense that I'm going to put another one in the back. I'm going to have this like kind of like a, a, a tabletop. And I'm planning on putting like a DJ setup on top of this, right? So I know you're probably thinking podcast, DJing. I think they go together hand in hand. And plus we have an internet radio station. So it's going to allow me to then mix and match tracks live from these different setups. In addition to the hard drives that I'm recording audio from. And even like, you know, jump drives. And then bust that through, record it actually mix and master some tracks live for some DJ and music and then actually run those back through podcasts and other stuff later on. And then behind that, I'm probably going to put like another piece of metal that comes up the top. I'll show you the back soon and I'll probably mount monitors up here. So you can kind of see how these monitors are, are set up and they're on risers. So think about these. Once I move these from this general location from this desk, I'm probably going to set these up on this rack to where they can be broken down and then put up. So ideally I can have you know, two monitors on one side or four monitors combined total, and then have it all compact within the, the width of this, 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 um, this box. So the goal will be connect one right here, turn it in, make sure that the monitor's width is, I think, roughly about the width of this. If the monitors could fit, then great. If they cannot, then obviously I just take them off. And I, I don't think that 30, two inch monitors going to fit but if i get 227s then it allows me to kind of have 227s that one will pan this way one will pan that way and then i could have a the, the, the laptop in the back of the actual um dj mixing device up here and then i could have the, that right there and if i really wanted to ideally with the extra arms i could put that monitor secondary right there so again this is an entire mobile setup that allows me to have a full-blown damn studio on the run now check out the back and keep in mind like the studio is junky right now because i got parts and cables everywhere because you know like i hear voices so just looking in the back of this now you can kind of see the cable management is ballistic it's crazy but the goal would be i'm going to itemize this once everything is connected and i may reroute some stuff because i've been moving things up and down you can kind of see how things are jerry rigged in the back now obviously like some of this is, is wood like the parts that's holding the atm mini is wood i did find like a metal plate that was online that was like a hundred bucks but that they, they only supported uh atm mini and the media stream deck they didn't include like a atm mini slash monitor so i just customized it cut some wood sanded it painted it black and used some tie wraps to, just to get it secured in there because obviously when it comes to shipping you want things to be secure now this i'm going to replace this with another one of these i think these are your best friends as far as a rack mounted power source so think about every section in here is going to have a rack mounted power source there's one down here at the bottom it'll be another one up here and probably another one up here so that way it has three different power sources all built into the system so i never have to worry about power the main power source is running through a hole in the middle so it allows me to kind of conceal it and I can run it underneath anything kind of like a gaffer. You got to have, have that set up to where this is the, the power management that comes from below. Right. And I think I'm sitting on the cord right now. So the cord comes out. These are some old school Ethernet slash Firewire ports. And I think I might just sell these, but it'll be interesting to see if I can convert these into HDMI or convert them into um, TTLs or um, BNC connectors. I just want to kind of play around with that to see if. Because, I mean, ideally, it would be great to kind of have these as hot hot switches and put multiple different video devices, including extra um, cameras or cell phones or, or anything that has, like, a video input. And then what I can do is hot patch them in and then run them back into the, the main HDMI. So this is a HDMI splitter, right? And you're probably wondering why the hell he has a splitter, considering that he has two HDMI um, minis in the front. Well, the idea here is that one is going directly to a monitor. One is going directly to the HD, um, the ATM minis, and I wanted the, the same signal to be on t be on both of them at the same different time. So that's why you're seeing on the video side the same simultaneous um, video stream. So this takes one input and it splits it by four, which is great because you kind of see I, I'm only using um, two inputs. Well, I got one input and two outputs, and this has four. So technically speaking, if I really wanted to, I can go into a studio with my setup or go wherever I want and plug it into like a huge monitor or a projector. And whatever you're seeing on the actual screen, you can see 
on the larger monitor as well. Um, <laughs> you can kind of see these little LED lights. That was just a cool little touch that I put in here to make this thing light up for, for like a low cost. And also it keeps it to where I can move it around and get things set up. And then when, when I'm said and done, I can remove them if I want to. So at every level, there's like a little L uh, LED light. Um, there's splitters everywhere in this bad boy. There's a Google box right there. Um, <laughs> by iWatch, which is just charging right now. So again, this is a self-sustained unit that's running on these massive ass wheels. So let me know what you think about this. Again, this is just converting the current studio into a mobile unit. And I'm trying to, you know, truncate the things from this table. And again, I'll organize this cable management once everything is said and done. But you kind of see I'm starting to, to pipe them in a little bit to kind of streamline this process to make it look a little bit sexier and prettier. And ideally, all the cables that are not busting out would be inside the frame. And then I'm going to go ahead and customize some of these metal pieces, which I started drilling holes in already. So these pieces are the pieces that are going to be on the on the back that's going to be level. Let me just give you a demonstration of what that's going to look like. It's going to be like this, pretty level to the other one, so it'll support the weight of um, the laptop and everything else behind it. But at the same time, there'll be pre-drill holes so I can kind of put wood on top of it or panels to then cover and enclose everything in this device and get this bad boy shipped. So this is just behind the scenes of the crap that I do in my downtime, build random customized stuff. You kind of see that this is the general studio setup. It looks like a bomb exploded in here right now, but ideally this is just me kind of taking pieces and elements. And the last but not least is this secondary box. I was wanting to make like a, a secondary um, miniature mobile unit. So I'm gonna put some, I think, what, what parts do I have in here? So I think I have, where is my hardware pieces? There's so many damn pieces in this bad boy. I think in here I have an old school a recorder. I'm actually looking, ah, there she is. <laughs> so I'm gonna set up this Zoom F4 mobile field unit, and I'm gonna rack mount this uh, the best I can because obviously it has XLR inputs on the side. And I'm gonna rack mount that in there, probably get another power unit in there, probably get a rack, and um, ideally, more than likely, maybe get another ATM mini or something a little bit smaller, maybe like a, a basic switcher and put it in here for like, you know, if I'm just going to like a, a coffee, a meetup or whatever, so I could just pull it out, plug it in and be ready to go versus just having like a, a little field monitor, which I do have. Not that one, I think it's this one. It's the other thing too, man, it's like podcasting is like collecting technology, old and new. And for me, it's always about like, how do I take something and, and upgrade it and maximize it? So this bad boy, I know the camera's probably shaking something crazy right now. This is a old zoom. Yeah. So we got the old handheld zooms. So I, I pretty much could use that as well. And I, I may just leave that for like, if I don't want to walk around with this and if I don't want to get this ship to do like a major production. And if I just want to do like a handheld recording, I could definitely do that. But ideally, that's what I've been working on, man. Let me know what your thoughts are. Thanks.